Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is the Eclipse Foundation member meeting for December 2013. Um, like a good, good number of you uh, that will be watching this, uh, we're in a northern climate, so there's a nice layer of snow on the ground. Um, as you can imagine, in Canada, it's kind of interesting. Um, it's not all bad, though. Of course, uh, up here at uh, Foundation headquarters, we have uh, a lot of fun activities we like to do. Um, one of them is uh, tobogganing. So uh, this is a picture from one of our recent uh, uh, tobogganing outings. But uh, seriously, uh, uh, we've got a, a, a brief agenda for you today. Today, um, we'll give uh, Mike Malinkovich will be giving you the executive director's update. Uh, Pierre Gofolet will be uh, giving you an update on the Polarsys working group, uh, and then you'll get a double dose of uh, Wayne Beaton uh, talking about uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, activity in terms of projects and uh, reviews uh, lately, as well as an update to the um, uh, EDP uh, for 2014. So um, our first speaker is going to be Mike Malinkovich. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, so I think this mouse should be there. Uh, so for those who aren't familiar with our uh, acronyms around here, the EDP is the Eclipse Development Process, um, and that's the process which governs the uh, the uh, process the process which governs our open source projects at the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, and Wayne will be uh, guiding you through uh, description of the updates that we are planning on the Eclipse development process uh, for 2014. Uh, that'll happen later. So for my updates, uh, I'll be covering a membership update, uh, a little, uh, as usual, a little bit on our finances, a couple of slides on things that are happening in our working groups, and finally a marketing update. Uh, typically, Ian Scarrett would be doing the marketing update, but unfortunately, his uh, uh, internet access is a little bit spotty, so uh, we decided that uh, I would handle it on his behalf this time around. So first off, the membership update. Um, so we're over 200 members now. We have 203 members, uh, 10 of which are strategic, and uh, one which is enterprise, uh, that being BlackBerry. So we are just under 1,000 committers representing over 100 different companies and organizations uh, supporting those committers uh, within the Eclipse Foundation. So you can see by, uh, by, by year uh, through the history of the Eclipse Foundation, uh, the 203 number that we're currently at is, uh, is a new record. And uh, so obviously we're very, uh, very happy with the, with the membership growth that we're seeing uh, and uh, very appreciative of the support. Some new members this quarter, uh, Amik EDA, uh, Lablocate, Vivid Solutions, uh, Clockwork, Bit Reactive, and Telemetry. So uh, welcome all of you uh, to the Solutions membership. And finally, one uh, associate member was also, also joined, and that's the M2M Alliance in, uh, in Europe. Uh, so and I'll point out that a number of those members, uh, certainly M2M Alliance, Telemetry, Bit Reactive, uh, are joining the Eclipse Foundation in support of the initiatives that we've got in the area of M2M -M and Internet of Things. Uh, it's an area where we'll be talking later about a, quite a few new projects joining as well. So it's an area, of, certainly an area of growth within the Eclipse community. Uh, so a financial update. Uh, so for this year, uh, the current uh, revised uh, or most recent forecast is uh, revenue of 4.4 million uh, with expenses of 4.7 uh, with a net loss of $300,000. Uh, we are still working diligently to bring that in to break even uh, and I'm still cautiously optimistic that we'll be close to that. So uh, of course we will be presenting final uh, numbers uh, on the year uh, at our members meeting at EclipseCon in, uh, in March. Uh, which I, I certainly hope to see everybody there face to face. Uh, there really isn't much change there from the last uh, last presentation, so uh, I think that's it for now. Uh, just to touch briefly on the budget, it was just approved by the uh, for next year, the, uh, which was just approved by the board of directors in yesterday's meeting uh, of the board. The uh, projections are for uh, pretty similar numbers for next year with a slightly higher loss projected uh, of 600000 but that's uh, again uh, a number that, uh, that we often project a loss at the beginning of the year and then uh, do significantly better. Uh, we do try to be very conservative in our, in our budgeting. Next topic is a working group update. 
So I'll go through each of these uh, working groups separately uh, and, and a few comments on each. Uh, so the long-term support, uh, steering committee members are Interpract or also known as Eclipse Source, uh, CA Technologies, SAP and IBM. Uh, thank you uh, one and all for supporting the uh, long-term support. So a couple of uh, updates for this quarter. The uh, group made the decision that uh, they'll start supporting, providing support for older versions of Eclipse. Uh, as welcome in, in long-term support. The uh, previous uh, requirements that Maven and Tyco be the, the build technologies have been relaxed. Uh, so that's, you know, obviously those two combined are going to be greatly increasing the potential number of projects which will be supported in the long-term support forge. And also uh, a free six-month trial uh, uh, for the long-term support membership is available. And if you're interested in trying out the long-term support Forge and trying out the facilities as part of that working group, please contact Andrew. Uh, the auto working group, um, we have BMW, Continental, I Itemus, and Bosch as the steering committee members. And so th again, thank you. Uh, currently, ongoing technical work there is uh, probably the the, um, the one that's of, of greatest interest is the work package three uh, on the uh, EA Top, which is a development tool, a Eclipse-based development tool for the East ADL uh, specification language has uh, now become an Eclipse project. There's uh, a new uh, group talking with us uh, about becoming an Eclipse working group called Open MDM that's also very automotive focused. So some conversations are happening happening with them about how to best uh, align their interests. Work package six uh, is just getting underway for a common build framework for uh, electrical and electronics engineering, uh, which is more sort of a C oriented uh, build infrastructure. And that's being uh, brought to Eclipse by Bosch. And uh, finally, the, uh, there's a European funded program uh, for doing tooling uh, and technologies uh, for multiprocessor architectures called Amaltea. And the Eclipse Foundation has been accepted into that consortium uh, and will be participating as a member of that consortium going forward. Next up is Location Tech. Uh, we have 11 members and uh, nine projects. Many of those projects came in to the group in the fourth quarter. So we're obviously very, very pleased with the momentum of the uh, Location Tech group. We have uh, some new projects uh, this quarter, uh, Geo Mesa, Geo Trellis, Geo Git, Spatial Hadoop, GTS Topology Suite, and Spatial 4J. Uh, so uh, welcome to all of those projects to the uh, Eclipse and Location Tech communities. Uh, and obviously, uh, this would not be possible without the support of Location Tech members. So thank you very much to especially the strategic members being Actuate, Boundless, Google, IBM, and Oracle. Uh, so this is a group that's obviously doing extremely well and gaining a lot of momentum. Uh, and we're very, uh, very pleased with uh, the progress being made. In the, in the last quarter, one of the things that, uh, just, you know, and thanks to Andrew for doing a lot of the work on this to set this up, uh, they did a location tech tour in the uh, northeast of, the, of, the, of North America, uh, two cities in Canada, Ottawa and Montreal, Boston, New York, Philadelphia, and Washington. And this road show uh, had well over 600 attendees in total uh, with uh, a great, now a great set of resources on YouTube available uh, for people who are interested in finding out what's going on in the, in, in the location tech community and with uh, these location aware technologies. So I think that it was a really uh, a great experiment. Uh, it took a lot of work uh, on Andrew's part, but uh, we think this was a great success and it was certainly a wonderful community building exercise for the location tech community. Moving now to M to M. Uh, so the uh, in, in a couple of events happened in the last quarter uh, that where the M to M group was represented. The first was an Etsy M to M workshop in the south of France, and uh, that was uh, where Ian Scarrett uh, and I think Benjamin Cabet and a few others were also representing the group there. Uh, also, uh, Ian did a, a talk at the Thing Monk conference in London uh, that was very well received. We had one. Uh, well, bit two, actually two new members. There's Bit Reactive, but also uh, Telemetry uh, joined to participate in the M2M working group as well. The new project proposals that came in in the last qu uh, quarter, uh, there were two. Uh, OM2M is an implementation of the Etsy M2M standard. It's a Java and OSGI based framework for doing device gateways. 
and leveraging the co-op and lightweight M2M protocols. And it's uh, uh, funded by uh, some uh, French research organization whose name escapes me at the moment. Uh, Cricket is a rules engine for uh, IoT architectures. Uh, the code contributions and the project leadership are coming from Cisco. Uh, we're obviously very happy to see Cisco involved in the, the Eclipse M2M group. Uh, we also had two MQTT articles created and published as, uh, as under the heading of content creation for this group, so uh, we're very pleased with that as well. So we have a, a, a really great and growing community of projects for the uh, M2M working group. Uh, I won't go through the whole list, but suffice it to say that if you are interested in this technology area, I would strongly encourage you to follow these projects. Uh, as a personal hobby of mine, I uh, play a lot at, uh, in the evenings with uh, Raspberry Pis and the like, and I've uh, got the uh, Cura code base up and running on a Raspberry Pi, uh, as well as some, uh, some examples with the, uh, the Lua-based Mahini projects, uh, and I'm pretty much halfway there in getting the Eclipse Smart Home stuff working as well. So it's a, a lot of fun. Uh, these projects uh, really represent a, a wonderful uh, collection of technologies for doing machine-to-machine uh, -machine and Internet of Things style applications, and uh, there's a lot of great stuff happening here. Looking forward to Q1, uh, the M2M group is uh, going to be focusing on even more project and member recruitment, and I think we actually are hoping to get two new projects for this group posted this week. Uh, right, Wayne? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so keep, keep an eye out for those. And uh, we have at EclipseCon uh, in uh, the third week of March in Burlingame, California, at the, near the San Francisco airport. We are going to have an M2M day and an MQTT interoperability testing day. Uh, so we're looking forward to hosting both those events uh, at EclipseCon. Also, of course, more content creation, more articles, more webinars uh, is something that uh, we have a lot of focus on as well. Okay, so uh, that's it for the uh, working group updates. Moving ahead to the marketing updates. Uh, again, I'll be channeling Ian Scared here, um, to try, at least try to do my very best on his behalf. So first up, uh, really strongly encourage everybody to mark on your calendars EclipseCon North America uh, on March 17th to 20th in San Francisco. Excuse me, uh, that's being held at the Hyatt Regency uh, San Francisco Airport in Burlingame. Uh, we're very happy with this location. It's uh, a place that we had uh, EclipseCon 2005 hosted at the same location, and it was a wonderful venue. We're definitely looking forward to going back. Uh, the schedule and the uh, sessions were just announced uh, a couple of days ago, I think maybe even yesterday. Uh, so uh, we're very pleased with the, with the agenda and the, and the uh, sessions that we've got. Uh, we're going to have an M2M -M day, a PolarSys day, and a Vertex day uh, hosted at EclipseCon as well. So I think that's, uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and of course, none of this would be possible without the, the work of Ian Bull and the rest of the program committee. Uh, so just definitely want to recognize all the time and effort that they've put into putting together a, a really great conference for our community. Sponsorship opportunities are still available, so please contact Perry Laverne if you are interested in being a sponsor. And registration is now open. Uh, for the low, low price of $700, you can get your early bird registration for EclipseCon. Uh, that's up until uh, December 31st, and uh, so looking forward to seeing lots of people at EclipseCon. Next topic is uh, one I think is going to be of interest to uh, everybody in the community, and that is that uh, we, we want to update our logo. Uh, the existing Eclipse logo uh, has been around now uh, since 2001, and it's uh, frankly showing its age a little bit, and uh, the time has come to, to think about uh, updating it. So uh, the kinds of things that we're looking for is, you know, we want to be somewhat similar to the existing logo. Uh, so that it's recognized by the Eclipse community uh, and, and all of our many, many millions of users and adopters. Uh, we would want to have the logo separate from the Eclipse word mark uh, so there's more flexibility in how it's used. Uh, we think the sphere is the key uh, graphical element of our logo, so that's one thing we definitely want to retain. The lines, the starburst, the shading, you know, not so much, uh, but it definitely the sphere we think is very important. Uh, we're definitely interested in new colors. Uh, personally, I'm pretty darn sick of deep purple. 
but that's just me. And I'm, by the way, my my opinion doesn't really count for more than anyone else's. But we uh, that's just uh, I, I'm hoping that we can find something that has a little bit more color. And we're definitely not into like cute. Uh, we you know we think uh, we want to have something that is uh, solid graphical design, uh, but we're not looking for something whimsical. Uh, so we've done a bunch of work uh, with uh, crowdsourcing uh, of a lot of different logos, uh, and we've sort of narrowed it down to these four design concepts. They're probably not the absolute final. Uh, there's probably a little bit of work left to go, but, uh, but these are the, the final four, if you will, uh, that, that we want to bring forward. And we are doing some work uh, where we're doing some sort of uh, survey or testing on our on our website. So when you go to the Eclipse.org homepage, you'll see a new logo in the top left and a little survey there to ask your impression on, on whether or not you like the new the logo that's there. Uh, so uh, please, you know, cast your votes. Keep an eye out for that. Get involved in the process. Uh, we, you know, very much want this to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, run with a lot of community involvement and participation. So uh, please jump in and get involved. And now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Pierre Gauffelet, uh, who is going to be walking us through uh, Polarsys. And uh, so welcome, Pierre, who's from Airbus and is the chair of the uh, Polarsys Working Group. Polarsys, uh, just to remind you, is a working group um, uh, aiming at uh, providing uh, several things to uh, industrial users of uh, Eclipse technologies on the, on the system developers. Uh, first, we want to uh, be able to use these technologies for a very long time. Basically, the, the, the life cycle, the complete life cycle of typical systems are around dozens of years, and it's not easy for us to, uh, to ensure that tools are available for this kind of, um, of duration. So Polarsys is here to solve this problem. But beyond that, we are also working to, uh, toward uh, things like open innovation. Uh, most industrialists um, um, uh, can share some uh, good practice on the on the very uh, interesting developments that cannot be uh, maintained uh, internally in uh, in um, a context like this, uh, like Polarsis, in fact. So uh, we have three kind of members right now in Polarsis: steering committee members, uh, which are obviously uh, uh, with a seat at the steering committee. So uh, the companies uh, in this uh, in this uh, of this kind are Airbus, Astrium, Thales, uh, the CEA, the French Nuclear uh, Agency, and uh, Ericsson. And uh, the second uh, typical role in Polarsys uh, are participant uh, participant members, more dedicated to companies uh, aiming to uh, to provide uh, tools or services around uh, the technologies developed in the working group. So basically, uh, we have. Uh, Right now we have uh, five uh, five members there: uh, OBO, Intex from uh, Italy, Soyatech, Combitech from Sweden, and Atos. And of course, we also welcome some uh, academic uh, guests uh, who are um, participating to the to the working group to help us to improve uh, some uh, specific uh, specific technologies. And right now, the uh, academic members are the University of Skövde and uh, l'École Polytechnique de Montréal. Polarsis has two uh, new members uh, during Q3. Uh, the, in fact, the, the academic members themselves, mainly because uh, the, um, the membership process has been refined for them during uh, last summer, and we are now uh, ready to uh, to host uh, more easily uh, this kind of uh, this kind of members. On the side of the projects, uh, Polarsis is hosting a more and more project, or is participate in fact to uh, proposals uh, of uh, Eclipse plane plane projects. The first one I, I would uh, like to talk about is Arcon. Arcos, Arcon is a project aiming to provide uh, model checking technologies based on UML. So it helps you to express uh, the kind of constraint you want to, uh, to, um, to check on your model using a, a UML model in itself, and uh, then provide an engine to, uh, to run those, uh, those check on your own models. Sirius 
is an Eclipse project. It has been proposed almost one year ago now. It's an important piece of technology for uh, the members of PolarSys. So even if uh, this project is not inside the working group, we keep, a, uh, we keep an eye, uh, a careful eye on it, and uh, we plan to, uh, to use it to, de to develop uh, new, uh, uh, new engineering components uh, in the working group in the coming uh, months and years. 3P is a Polarsys packaging project. This, this project is a little specific because uh, it uh, mainly aims at uh, uh, providing uh, packaging for, for Polarsys technologies, but I will come back on this project later. There are quite a lot of proposals uh, ongoing. Uh, one for Chess, a component-based uh, development framework for real-time system uh, based on Papyrus. GenDoc, which is um, a documentation generator uh, based on document templates uh, uh, used to, uh, to, um, to generate uh, open document or uh, Microsoft Word uh, documents from e any EMF model. This component is coming from uh, Topcase, in fact, and is already uh, used on uh, some, uh, on some uh, real scale projects. RecCycle is about Rec's uh, requirement management and uh, uh, represents probably the next step in terms of requirement uh, uh, tooling inside the Eclipse Foundation. And last but not the least, there are still a few components to be migrated from uh, Topcase into, uh, into PolarSys and Eclipse. We are currently working on the OCL uh, component, uh, of course, GenDoc, but also on some other uh, minor, uh, minor components like specific views for modeling on the requirement, uh, requirement tools. We aim at integrating all of that inside the packages of PolarSys before, uh, before Luna. Polarsys had been participating to quite a few events these days. Uh, first, uh, we had um, a public meeting uh, just before uh, uh, Eclipse, uh, EclipseCon Europe, quite successful with uh, with a few uh, a few new uh, new people uh, around the table. It was uh, it was very interesting to to see new uh, uh, new participants to this kind of uh, of uh, meeting. We had also uh, a Polarsys Day aiming at uh, uh, giving information about Polarsys in Stockholm uh, at the beginning of the month, uh, especially uh, with the uh, aerospace company of, uh, of the area. And uh, Polarsys has uh, been awarded uh, by the ITEA uh, community during, uh, during uh, the um, Artemis ITEA costume meet uh, uh, two weeks ago. Okay, last, last thing uh, on the event side, we will also set up a common booth. By common, we mean that Polarsys uh, will share between its member a booth at the ERTS uh, event. That's something we aim at, uh, at doing uh, uh, each time the working group uh, want to participate or, or to be, uh, to be uh, presented during, during specific conferences. So this booth is shared uh, between the, the interested members of the working group. ERTS will be in, uh, in next February in Toulouse. So what will uh, what will come uh, next year in Polarsys? First, we want to uh, increase uh, the added value of uh, uh, core services of the working group for its member. The first topic uh, that we will address will be the maturity assessment framework. There are two aspects in that. We want to uh, to be able to uh, uh, evaluate uh, technically a component. Is it, uh, is it uh, not only coded in the right way, but are all the artifacts present, uh, etc. And we also want to have information about its community. Uh, for example, uh, is, uh, is there enough support on, uh, on the forums and so. So it's a very important point for us next, uh, next year. Based on the result of this assessment framework, we will uh, we'll define guidelines on the ser specific services to improve the maturity itself. Uh, in terms of uh, communication, we are also on, um, uh, defining uh, a newsletter for the working group that will help uh, both members and the, and the public uh, to, uh, to, be, uh, to get uh, informed of what is going on in the project. And last but not the least, um, we want to have, I would say, a kind of, not 
not for, well, let's say a fancy demonstrator for uh, for what for the technologies that they uh, used in Polarsis. So it's probably something like a drone or something like this based on modeling techniques on the, what uh, what we uh, we package inside the, the, the Polarsis packages. So let's go back a few uh, a few minutes on uh, on FreeP. So as I said, this project uh, aim at providing the packages for uh, for Polarsis. So, so if you, con to, you compare that to uh, existing uh, Eclipse project, it is similar to uh, the EPP, the Eclipse Packaging Project. Uh, the di main difference with him is that uh, uh, 3P is not only dedicated to Eclipse in terms of technology. We can also host some uh, some other packages based on uh, some uh, other platforms like. Uh, plain C or C++ uh, components or uh, component in Camel and so. We also plan to provide in, uh, in FreeP some uh, components helping to deploy, uh, to deploy the packages on Eclipse uh, in, um, in industrial context. So you, you can uh, follow the link for more information. There, there, is a, there is a specific page on the Polarsys um, wiki on the website. So 3P uh, is uh, driven right now by four people. I'm acting myself as, as the PMC lead of, uh, of the project, but it is uh, it is uh, also um, uh, maintained by Benoît Langlois and Mathieu Lebois from Thales and Melanie Batz from OBO. This is an open project, like any project in Polarsis. We are Polarsis project are basically also Eclipse project. So volunteers are welcome. So where is 3P right now? It's in incubation since last February. The infrastructure is up and running, and we are quite happy with it. Uh, on the last month, we uh, published the first release, the first milestone of, uh, of package for Polarsys called Polarsys IDE. And uh, we plan to have one more version uh, just after Kepler SR2. Uh, and we will then prepare, uh, prepare the packaging for Luna in, uh, in uh, next June. Just to give you an idea of the kind of components we integrated in this uh, in this package, uh, it is based right now on Kepler SR1. Uh, you can find inside uh, inside it um, a lot of modeling components because uh, we think that uh, modeling is a, is an important point for system and software development in this in industrial context. Uh, but also components help you to develop in C, like CDT, or uh, tra transversal components like uh, Mylin or uh, or eGit. Okay, I already talked about the roadmap, so nothing new at this point. I think uh, I think it's quite clear. Our objective is really to be uh, to be ready for Luna and to uh, to have also an assessment in terms of maturity of both components of packaging for this uh, for this release. So that's all for for this presentation. Uh, if you have questions about the Polarsis or want to have more detail, please uh, feel free to contact me or Gael Blondel. That's all for me. Uh, Andrew, you can. Great. Thanks very much, Pierre. I'm just going to switch to back to our presentation. And our next speaker is Wayne Beaton, who's going to give us an update on uh, projects at the foundation. Thanks, Wayne. <coughs> Thanks, Andrew. So, uh, Eclipse Project update, uh, you know, fancy graphic. The uh, simultaneous release uh, seems to be uh, progressing uh, progressing well. Um, a few of the architecture council, sorry, pardon me, the planning council uh, reps um, went through our uh, participation uh, documents and FAQ and uh, really uh, made some significant improvements. Um, so anyway, if, if you're pro if you have a project that's participating in a simultaneous release, uh, the documentation I, I think has taken a um, you know the the already very you know very good documentation has been has been improved. Uh, more involvement uh, tends to do that, and I really like the level of involvement that's happening uh, at the planning council level. Um, the time for opt-in uh, with Luna is now. Uh, M4 is the opt-in date, uh, which is actually December 20th. But if you wanted to do it today, that would be okay with me. Um, if you go to uh, Wiki. Uh, .eclipse.org slash Luna. Uh, on there, there is a, a direct link to how you um, uh, how, how you um, state your intent to participate in the uh, simultaneous release. Uh, also, uh, we have been um, posting fairly regularly on the cross-project issues dev mailing list. Uh, I strongly recommend anybody 
Um, frankly, I, str I strongly recommend that everybody uh, sign up for that, that list. Uh, certainly if you're uh, an Eclipse project committer um, or if you have uh, any interest in an Eclipse project as an adopter, that's a mailing list you should be monitoring because uh, lots of really good information comes uh, through that. At this point, I have 57 actually. This chart is now uh, one off. 57 projects have uh, opted in explicitly as required to participate uh, in the Luna release. The, um, uh, we're at, that's actually uh, a few short. I've got a couple of new projects this year. Uh, I think I wind up with about 18 projects from last year haven't yet stated their intent to participate. Um, so uh, I encourage you if you are one of those projects to please uh, 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 please state your intent. Um, if you're not sure, uh, you can go to uh, projects.eclipse.org slash releases slash Luna to see if your project is listed there. Um, also, uh, with regard to the simultaneous release, a bug has been opened uh, by the Planning Council to discuss the name uh, for the next uh, release. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Mike is, uh, is falling short uh, of, of where we would like it to be, so your votes are, are important. Uh, my personal favorite is Eclipse, mm, but uh, I don't think that's going to get any traction either. I think Magellan is the current leader. Uh, so we need your vote. <laughs> Actually, I don't mind Magellan. Uh, Mercury is another one, right? Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about the ends, but uh, that's something. Uh, anyway, your, your input is certainly uh, welcome there. Vote for Eclipse Mike. <laughs> vote for Eclipse Mike. Um, I'm on slide 29 now. Uh, I've, I think most of the projects uh, that are that are in our, in our pipeline right now are, uh, have already been discussed. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on them because, uh, you know, again, I think it's already been discussed. I, I will highlight uh, common build infrastructure is something that's existed uh, for a little while, and uh, we've started the process of turning that into an actual Eclipse project. Uh, so there will be formal releases and, uh, you know, proper, uh, no, proper, proper following of all the processes, which I think is, uh, is good for everybody. Um, I'll also, well, I guess they've already been highlighted uh, on this list are some projects uh, that are certainly from the M2M to M to M, um, uh, working group. We have uh, some uh, location tech projects as well. And uh, there's several um, uh, Polar Sys projects. Uh, I'm also uh, particularly uh, excited about the Cricket uh, project because the name is, uh, comes directly from the Douglas Adams um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is, I believe, required reading for everyone. Um, I'm just skipping right through these proposals. Again, they're all here. There's a description of them for you to review. Uh, and of course, the proposals themselves are, are easily accessible from the uh, eclipse.org slash projects page. Uh, I've moved on to creation now. Uh, we had several creation reviews in, uh, in this quarter. Uh, again, um, there's a lot here. I'll leave this for you to read. Uh, const, you know, well, anyway, there's a, there's a handful here from, um, from Eclipse, but uh, we do have uh, at least one from uh, Location Tech, which is pretty exciting. Um, I just added a termination review for Swordfish. That project uh, will, will, be, uh, will be archived uh, in the new year, I guess. Um, also, um, <clears throat> not, it didn't make it in time for this presentation, but uh, I have the IDE Meta Tooling Platform, or IMP, will be uh, terminating uh, the G Eclipse project. And if I have time uh, today to enter the, uh, the particulars for the two projects, the IDE for EDU and examples projects uh, will be added to the termination list. Uh, it's worth noting, uh, this is, uh, these are from um, the technology uh, PMC. The technology PMC also considered terminating the voice tools project and the tiger stripe project. Uh, but both of them were given a reprieve based on um, on some promises to uh, to to reinvigorate the project. It actually turns out the Tiger Stripes uh, had some activity, uh, lots of activity going on in their e in their mailing list, but not a lot of commits going on. Uh, and apparently, that's going to be changing. Uh, Voice Tools is actually a project that could use some help. If this is something that anyone in the community is interested in, they could certainly use uh, some some additional contribution. Uh, at this point, I have a single committer on there who is committed to uh, uh, pushing the project forward. 
Uh, we have a couple of releases, uh, Sapphire uh, 0.7, I like to call that one out because uh, frankly Constantine has been doing a fantastic job of getting the word out about that project and there's lots of very cool stuff in there. I invite you to take a look on planeteclipse.org uh, to get, a, get a, in contact with, uh, with the, uh, the, the work that the project has been doing. Um, uh, also graduation, the BPM, BPMN2 modeler project graduated. I have a ton of releases. Again, I won't go through all of these. Um, to this list, uh, I will add actually a second uh, release this quarter for the uh, EGIT and JGIT project. They're making their 3.2 release next week. Uh, RAP uh, is also added to this list. The uh, oh, Rich Application Platform. I changed their name and I can't remember exactly what they call it. Anyway, uh, their 2.2 release is uh, is coming out, and XWT is uh, pushing out a, a, a point one a point ten uh, release uh, next week. Um, if actually it's too late. If you, if, you know this, these will be the last releases uh, for the year. If, uh, if your project is looking for a release, uh, we uh, we can target January. Uh, I just wanted to quickly remind uh, people of the uh, re-release uh, process or the review process. Uh, this graphic on slide 37 um, is sort of trying to give you, I want to just give you some indication of the time uh, requirements that, that, that we have. Uh, we try to be very accommodating where possible, but if you can, please submit your IP log uh, for review by the IP team and your review documentation for uh, review uh, by your PMC in at least two weeks in advance of your release date. That, that, that's, that's very helpful. Um, just also a reminder to projects that uh, planning is important. Uh, I know that the community looks forward to, uh, many, many, many people in our community uh, look, look to project plans to figure out what projects are up to. Uh, it's not enough to just have things in Bugzilla as part of your release cycle. Please, um, Make sure that you're capturing your plans and doing regular iterations uh, before making your release. Um, <clears throat> also important to note that uh, it's, uh, you can capture all this plan information using the, the project management infrastructure, the PMI. Uh, minimally, uh, we expect projects to be providing a decent description, uh, themes, and milestones uh, for each release. Again, this should be happening at the beginning of a release cycle, not in this you know, frantic scramble at the end. Um, we've uh, made some changes to how the PMI works. Uh, in particular, uh, we, we added a tray at the bottom of the screen, which, uh, which includes uh, a couple of things. I threw top-level projects in there just as an experiment to see what, uh, you know, how people responded to it. Uh, the other thing is just a, 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 uh, a tray item for committers, which contains commands. So things like you can create a contribution questionnaire directly from here, generate your IP log directly from here. Um, create new release. Uh, this menu was. A, this is a menu that we're going to be using to um, to place all sorts of commands. So you know, if you want to do things with your project, this is the place uh, to go and uh, and find out how to do it. Uh, again, it's a new. U, it's a UI concept that we're experimenting with, and uh, so far the feedback has been positive. If uh, you have other feedback, please let me know. Um, we also added to the to the PMI the ability to specify team project sets um, in your in your um, metadata. The the PMI uh, project metadata lets you specify a lot of stuff. Uh, team project sets are just our latest addition. You actually have the ability to specify downloads directly in there. Uh, we have a notion of what uh, we're calling a a big button download. You have like your main download URL uh, shows up as a big uh, right now orange button, uh, but you can have marketplace. Um, Entries and um, uh, download specific downloads and uh, update sites. They're all they all can be specified directly in your uh, project metadata, when, and we use that information to render we render that information uh, on on the pages, uh, project pages. So I invite you to take a look at that and um, and, and and make use of that. Um, so actually, uh, it says Q and A, but we had one more thing we wanted to do. I'll tab the next one. There you go. So one of the things I've been working on this quarter is uh, a modification to the Eclipse development process. How are we for time? Good. Okay. 
Um, oh, sorry. The, uh, the 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 live version of the document is accessible uh, on the web if you uh, if you're if you're curious to see what the new version looks like. Um, Eclipse.org slash project slash dev underscore process slash development underscore process underscore 2014. Um, the um, on there you'll actually see links to uh, both the previous version of the document uh, to the. Um, a, doc, a link to uh, a diff document that will show you uh, how, how this changes from the previous version. There's also a PDF uh, version uh, available for review if, uh, if you feel a need to do it that way. Uh, our major themes with uh, this version, this iteration of the EDP was uh, four things. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the uh, Eclipse development process aligns well with our uh, social coding initiatives. Uh, this includes things like the, uh, the CLA work, and, um, and some projects they're now hosting on GitHub. Um, so we want to make sure that we weren't conflicted, there were no, uh, through that any potential conflicts there. Uh, attempt to reduce the redundancy, just overall sim simplify the document. Uh, align with reality every once in a while. We recognize that some things and practices are, are just not realistic and, and we, we either modify them or remove them. And uh, just overall general correctness of the document. Um, it turns out with uh, social coding, uh, we really didn't need to do anything. The document uh, pretty much uh, aligned well with, uh, well, more than pretty much. It, it aligned with all of our goals for social coding and didn't require any specific modification to, uh, to manage that. Um, we, uh, it was, uh, one of the things we wanted to do was make it explicit. This is actually something that's been true uh, for a while. It's actually, I believe, baked into the bylaws as well. Uh, the EMO uh, executive director is actually in the uh, chain of leadership for every project. Uh, also, the EMO is actually in there too. So what we've done is explicitly uh, made that explicit in the Eclipse development process. So your, uh, for any given project, your leadership chain includes the project leads, uh, the project leads of any uh, parent projects, uh, the PMC, uh, corresponding PMC, and then of course the EMO and the EMO uh, executive director. Uh, for what it's worth, a lot of people don't realize that the EMO, when we talk about the EMO, that's actually um, the Eclipse Foundation staff and um, the councils. So that includes the architecture and, uh, and planning councils as well. Uh, when you send an email to emo at eclipse.org, it comes to me. I represent both of those bodies and, and, uh, and act on their behalf. Or, sorry, all of those bodies. That body. The body. Anyway. Um, Moving on, uh, we had uh, some confusion uh, in the document regarding the use of the terms project leadership and project leads. Uh, so we, we went through and we cleaned that up. Uh, by, I just, I've just i got an example here um, where, uh, where we've cleaned it up. So when we really do mean project lead in the document, we say project lead rather than talk about it. I think one of the problems is leadership. Project leadership has a specific meaning and at some points in the document we were using it in a more generic or general way. Um, we took out the requirement for yearly reviews. Uh, instead, this will be the PMC's responsibility to make sure that the projects are all progressing at the correct rate or whatever, whatever that means for the project. Um, in general, uh, we tend to uh, encourage at least annual release reviews, but again, for some projects that just may not make sense and we leave it to the responsibility of the PMC uh, to sort out, uh, you know, again, what makes sense means. Uh, so in that regard, we've taken out continuation reviews as well. Continuation reviews were uh, effectively a means of having a review without doing a release. And uh, since we no longer need the yearly release, the continuation review, uh, which frankly we've, we haven't done in a very long time anyway, um, is redundant, so that's been removed. Promotion reviews also uh, the process by which we migrate a top or a project to become a top level project. Uh, we just don't do it that way. Um, I, I, the uh, the way that the last few top level projects have been created is that the uh, the board of directors uh, votes on on a char on accepting a charter for the top level project, and, and then we we basically make it happen. Uh, so rather than having an, a community review period, uh, what we're doing is. Um, when this happens, we just make sure the community is aware of, of, the, of the change. Um, and of course, none of these changes ever happen in a vacuum anyway. Um, there's generally ten, lots of community involvement and discussion ahead of a project, uh, either becoming a top-level project or just joining the 
Eclipse Foundation as a top-level project. Um, move reviews were removed, but uh, that actually happened a long time ago. Uh, we just have more just taking the section, removing the section. Uh, move reviews were merged into, into restructuring reviews, uh, I think, with the last iteration. Um, general cleanup, uh, just as a word, in there, we added a sentence in there that basically suggests that graduation reviews tend to occur with uh, release reviews. Uh, we kept the concept of a graduation review being uh, as a separate idea. Uh, restructuring review, we decided was just too much, too, re too verbose, so we took a big chunk of the text out of that and, and put it into a guideline document instead. Um, the term permanent, uh, term incubator and, incub and project in the incubation phase uh, was determined to be confusing, uh, so we, we tried to uh, better qualify the concept of a permanent incubator. Uh, projects may have a permanent incubator that uh, is where they, they experiment with new ideas, uh, grow committers, uh, grow project code, that kind of stuff before it gets moved into the proper project. <coughs> So within the document, we consistently talk about permanent incubators when that's what we mean. Uh, and I, just, I believe that we're very consistent with the use of the, of the phrase project in the incubation phase. Um, project, uh, sorry, permanent incubator projects no longer, will no longer require a creation review as well. Just uh, if, a, if a mature project wants a, uh, an incubator, a permanent incubator, then they can just ask for one. I went through the document and um, I, uh, we, we turned, we decided that we were going to, to um, fix, their, fix the capitalization such that it follows standard English language conventions uh, with the, you know, the idea being that this is a document intended for developers, so we wanted to make it easier for developers to read. Uh, so there's, you know, a small example, but uh, basically, you know, where we may have capitalized the, the word project throughout the document, uh, that was actually done sort of inconsistently anyway. Uh, now we follow what I said, like I said, the, the standard English conventions. There was some confusing language regarding project lead termination. Uh, we just uh, cleaned that up. Uh, really, this was more just a matter of, um, I think, proper use of commas uh, in, in, a, in a list. Uh, top level is not a phase. You really just haven't been treating a top level project idea as a phase uh, for a long time, so I took that out. Uh, you'll also, um, if, you, if you're familiar with the document, you'll also notice there's a bit of a bug, I think, that existed for a long time. Uh, we're going from proposal phase um, to, I guess, you had to, you had to, in the previous version of the document, it suggested that you needed to do a termination review to move a project out of, out of the proposal phase. Um, so that was just silly. We just removed that. Uh, there's a small redundancy in the community section, which we removed. I don't believe it changes the, any of the meaning. Um, we decided to add in a, a, uh, a paragraph that describes how project namespaces are assigned to projects. Uh, the idea being that, uh, you know, in, in the Java world, project, uh, NOSJ world, project namespaces tend to be org.eclipse.project short name. Um, that, that convention will, will continue forward as new languages with namespace requirements come up. We will uh, let the Architecture Council decide what's best. Uh, and we actually have a uh, that link at the bottom of this slide is a link to the wiki page that shows uh, those guidelines. Uh, I think right now all we really have are Java language. So if uh, you're working with a project that uses a language that needs some help in terms of what, you know, uh, what namespace you should be using, please contact the Architecture Council. <clears throat> we removed the requirement for incubating projects to use pre-1.0 version numbers. Um, again, we leave this as a, an issue between the project and their PMC to decide what is correct for their community. Uh, my belief is, my expectation is moving forward, we will continue to recommend a pre-1.0 release version number uh, for all incubating projects. Um, I think that there is a general understanding within the community that when you use a 1.0 or higher uh, release number, that implies uh, a certain um, level of maturity. Uh, again, we'll leave that as an issue between the PMCs and the projects to decide. Um, and so is it more of a guideline rather than a rule? The, um, I presented this to the board of directors yesterday. We are hoping to have uh, board approval, um, actually I say in January, but I think in, or a little earlier than that. 
and um, we're intending to go live with this in February of 2014. Uh, I don't believe that there's anything in here controversial that will affect the um, simultaneous release. Uh, otherwise, we would have maybe pushed this to August or something. But I think I think that we're ready. Uh, and again, I don't think there's anything controversial in here uh, that should stop uh, should affect uh, anything or affect ongoing work. Uh, with that, uh, I'm done. I and I will turn it back over to Andrew. Thanks, Wayne. So the next part of the agenda is for questions. So there's a couple different ways to ask questions. Um, for those who uh, choose Twitter, uh, you can use the Eclipse MM hashtag. Uh, for those who are in any of our IRC channels, so uh, Eclipse or Eclipse Dev, um, you can basically just uh, look for uh, AROS42, that's me, uh, and, and post your question there. Uh, as well, if you want, you can email me. Uh, I'm andrew.ross at eclipse.org. Uh, I'm glad to take your questions. So uh, we've got a list of questions uh, at the moment. A bunch of them came in through uh, Twitter. So I'm uh, sorry, uh, not Twitter, uh, IRC, uh, although I'm actually monitoring all of them. I'm just going to pass the, the list over here to, to Mike because some of them I think are, are of most interest uh, and most relevant for him to speak to. Alrighty, so actually, so the ones that are highlighted here, so there's a, there's a question here, uh, wow, a loss every year? Uh, no, actually if we lost money every year we'd be out of business, so that's not, what we do is we forecast a loss every year and then exceed expectations. Um, so uh, I don't think we've, uh, we're, we're basically the last uh, six or seven years in a row we've been plus or minus uh, 100k uh, on the on the bottom line has been, has been the the uh, the pattern, and we certainly expect to do that again this year. So that's so the the answer to your question is no. We do not lose money every year. We f we forecast or budget a loss uh, typically, um, and then exceed expectations. So hopefully that answers the question. Uh, in terms of where is most of the money spent, um, most of the money is uh, obviously uh, number one is salaries, uh, number. Two is um, our IT infrastructure, and then number three would probably be something. Uh, geez, now conferences. Conference. Well, yeah, sorry. N number one is salary. Number two is conferences, uh, because the the conference uh, the con to put on the conferences costs us uh, somewhere on the order of uh, eight hundred and fifty nine hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, for the three conferences plus the Eclipse Days, the demo camps, and so on. Uh, so events in general and meetings. Uh, and then uh, number three, I'm pretty sure, is our IT infrastructure, bandwidth, and the like. Um, so that's the sort of the, the top three um, in that order. So uh, salaries, events, IT. Uh, then the next question was, uh, the OSGI yeah, Con. what is the reason the OSGI um, DevCon uh, does not co-host co this year at EclipseCon? Uh, the reason basically was uh, a combination of space and priorities. Uh, so when we moved to the uh, this new location in Burlingame, uh, there was only enough room for so many parallel tracks, uh, and uh, we decided that uh, we were going to use the scarce resources to do things like host the M to M and Polar Sys days and basically give more space uh, to the working groups at Eclipse uh, as opposed to OSGI. As far as I know, we're still planning on doing um, the OSGI DevCon or OSGI event uh, at EclipseCon Europe next year. Uh, so I, I think that as far as I know, that's still going to go ahead. But um, yeah, that's, that's the reason why the, uh, the OSGI DevCon is not uh, at EclipseCon this year. Uh, and then there's another last question about the European entity. Uh, is it going to have additional staff, uh, e.g. in the IT department? So the, first off, the, we have established legally the Eclipse Foundation Europe GmbH. Uh, so that as a legal entity now exists in Germany. Uh, and so that is now up and running as a legal entity. Uh, at this time, we're not planning on adding any additional staff, uh, and uh, the, we do have three staff in Europe right now. That's Ralph Mueller, uh, Jelena Alter, and uh, Gail Blondel and, in France, and that's the expectation for the moment. Uh, we certainly at the moment do not plan on ha having any IT staff in, in Europe uh, to uh, supplement what we have here. 
we've talked about that on and off, uh, and at the moment it's simply a matter of we, we can't afford it. Um, that could change over time, but that's where we are for the time being. The we are hoping that the self-service Hudson instance per project uh, that is being set up by the uh, IT staff will give developers and project, project leaders uh, more ability to um, fix problems with builds and the like, uh, which will hopefully uh, improve some of the situations for folks in Europe. Did that get all the questions? I think that was it. I'm just going to do one more check here. So anybody who's got any final questions, please uh, hurry up. You've got just a matter of seconds. Okay, I don't see any in IRC. Do one more check of Twitter, and uh, we will wrap up. Okay, I think that's it. So uh, thank you, everyone, for making time for the meeting today, and thank you to our, our speakers. Uh, should anybody have any uh, additional questions uh, or comments or feedback, uh, my contact information is all over the place. Uh, my colleagues, uh, Wayne and Mike, and, and the rest of the staff here at the Foundation, uh, we're here to help you. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to give us a shout. Uh, aside from that, uh, thank you very much, and have a safe and happy holiday. Happy holidays, everybody. <laughs>